Ishiro debuted on One Piece Treasure Cruise Global on the 28th of April 2018. Dressrosa receives yet another Sugo Fest batch with the second version of a fan favorite legend. The Dressrosa themed characters that were featured in this batch included Rebecca, future of the former Dressrosa royal family, Violet, princess of the former Dressrosa royal family, and Kiros, hero of the former Dressrosa royal family, and finally Bellamy the Hyena, assassin for the current king of Dressrosa. And the Sugo Fest exclusive character of the batch aimed to bolster the slasher class, as the previously released legend that focused on this class was Zoro back in mid-2017. The special of the character provided his crew with matching slots, however the slots were only given when the character was positioned as the captain, which gave the character little usability. Introducing Isho, new Navy HQ strongest. In this series, we'll be traveling back in time to experience some of the older Sugo Fest exclusive characters in their prime, aiming to show just what it was like to use these characters on their debut. I hope you enjoy the video, and without further ado, let's enter the Legends of OPTC. So thank you very much for checking out yet another episode of the Legends of OPTC series. And in this video, we're covering V2 Fujitora, which was a bit of an odd release, honestly, because, I mean, like, another version of the Admirals was, was really, really cool to see. However, it really did suck because this character was not really considered to be, like, a top-tier character, even on release. And it is such a shame because even with the Super Evolution, the character really didn't get a lot of love. So it is a shame, you know, this is not a very powerful legend. Not a lot of people really like this character on release however it brought along some pretty interesting rare recruits so let's go ahead and talk about them first so first of which is rebecca being a dex slasher striker and her captain ability is bad but her special 50k fixed to a single enemy reduces chain multiply limit so chain lock or chain coefficient reduction by five turns and also give you adjacent slots matching so removing five turns of the chain debuffs was pretty cool. However, there were other ways you could deal with it. Um, you know, obviously, if you get given chain coefficient reduction, you can just use a chain locking effect. Um, and if you get given a chain lock, if you have a multi-turn chain locker you can use on the stage prior or the turn prior, that will allow you to get around it. So, you know, in a lot of instances, this character really wasn't that useful, but there are still some key, you know, uses for this character. I mean, uh, with Limit Break going down to an eight-turn cooldown, pretty respectable cooldown for what it does. Not an amazing special, but still not a terrible rare recruit. Next on the agenda is Violet, and uh, she is amazing. This character has seen a lot of play in the past, and, uh, you know, just random niche uses, because she's a slasher cerebral, so she's got good classes, she's a quick unit, and her captain ability, once again, is pretty bad, but it is a belly-boosting captain, which is interesting. But uh, on an eight-turn cooldown, once again, it changes recovery, tandem, empty, and block slots into matching, then reduces paralysis and special bind by two turns, and also gives you a chain boost. This was very useful and used in a lot of content. Of course, you know, only only removing two turns of special bind when you think of it now is pretty bad but when you think back way back then uh, you know special bind removal wasn't needed as much and uh, whenever it did come up you know this character does completely resist it so you can always just remove at least two turns of it reduces the paralysis by one turn for the whole crew which is again like extremely valuable so um, you know this character Violet pretty decent rare recruit character that's seen a lot of play since her release in a lot of different teams the next rare recruit is Kiros who is a strength slasher striker and his captain ability was a 2.5 captain to slasher and striker but of course you know in today's day and age 2.5 captain was nothing special but a 13 turn cooldown 30 times his attack and strength damage to a single enemy reduces bind and despair by two turns and then boost the attack of slashes by 1.75 times for three turns pretty nice actually to have a, a huge boost for multiple different turns of course you know this is coming in fujitora's batch so you have a lot of good slashes in here that can build a pretty good team around and some good type diversity as well so a three turn 1.75 attack booster and adding some utility on top of it and if we think about it now you can have the support of Whitey Bay on this character to remove an additional two turns of Bind and Despair. So overall Kiros again like a pretty decent rare recruit character not really breaking down the walls he's not game breaking he's not meta defining but he's just a solid rare recruit. And then the final rare recruit of the batch which doesn't really have any synergy with any of the characters is Bellamy. Um, Bellamy will actually see a little bit of synergy with a future Sugo Fest exclusive that we'll cover in a few weeks but uh, Bellamy a sci-fi 
fighter driven and his captain ability being a 2.75 driven captain and then his special doing a 50% health cut to your own crew but then he deals 10 times the amount of HP subtracted to typeless damage to a single enemy so he does hit relatively hard depending on the team composition but then he does remove damage threshold and increase defense and enemy attack up all by three turns and he gives himself a matching slot. A pretty interesting special once again it, it is a it is a kind of nice to see more utility based effects because again like utility specials weren't really that common especially when this guy was coming out as as months progress we start to see more and more utility based rare recruits coming out which is obviously where things start to change where the content becomes way more difficult but uh, nine turn cooldown for what he does is pretty good um you know this character didn't see too much play but in today's day and age he's used a lot as a support as he can remove increased defense and threshold by two turns anytime a doe flamingo uses their special this is a very very nice support that's seen a lot of different play on a lot of teams so mainly because of the support this character was useful and then we get to the sugo fest exclusive being isho or fujitora the new navy hq strongest this character int slash a powerhouse captain ability would increase damage received by 1.2 times boost the attack of slashes by 3.25 at the start of the chain with a 1.2 health boost and then boost the attack of slashes by 4.225 following the chain of good great and perfect shout out to those guys but yeah this is uh like when you look at this captain ability it's just so weird man like you know 4.225 is really good for when this guy released that's a really good multiplier you only get it via good great perfect though at least you get a base 3.25 times boost which is still relatively good at the time but of course as months progress where characters get even stronger um this character just falls by the wayside and it, just the slasher class in general was not really considered to be one of the more powerful classes in the game they didn't have an, an extremely op captain like what some of the other classes or colors do and for some reason they decided to give increased damage taken in the captain ability for some reason we don't know why they did this and it kind of just negates the 1.2 health boost that he naturally would provide so yeah just a very odd design choice for this character and then speaking of odd design choices, his special being a 10 hit of 20 times his attack in typeless damage to random enemies, which is fine. He also delays all enemies by one turn. And then if this character is your captain or your friend captain, he changes all slots of slashes into matching. So this is again, another really odd choice in that he only changes slots if he's the captain, number one, that really sucks. Um, number two, he doesn't get rid of block slots either, which also is not a good design choice. And he only changes slasher character slots into matching. So, you know, there's a lot of really bad design choices just in general with this character. They kind of set him up to fail almost immediately on release. I think they really should have gone back to the drawing board and, you know, given him some slightly better effects. But in today's video, we're going to go ahead and showcase him. And hopefully we're able to get through some content using him as the captain. So we've got three different pieces of content here today. We've got Colosseum Eneru, we have Clash Rayleigh, and Colosseum Kiros. I think all three of these are going going to be relatively difficult using Isho or Fujitora as the captain so let's go ahead and spin that wheel and let's see what kind of content we're going to be playing with Isho today I, I, I'm kind of excited to jump into it but also kind of nervous at the same time and we're going to be taking on Colosseum Eneru which is uh, a pretty difficult Colosseum but a good Colosseum nonetheless this character on release was godly and hopefully we can go ahead and get the job done utilizing V2 Fujitora we're back in game now with my man V2 Fujitora, Admiral of the Navy HQ. After he found out about Doflamingo's retirement news proved to be false, he decided to offer the Warlords his assistance temporarily. However, his true intention was the eventual abolishment of the Seven Warlords of the Sea. And so his attitude towards Doflamingo was not the most cordial. And of course, here we are with the man himself. And uh, this guy has plus 100 attack and HP. He's not rainbow because I actually had, for some reason, I had this dupe sitting here. For some reason, I don't know why, but he's here. Uh, he has uh, the limit break, of course, but he does not have, you know, a rainbowed border or anything like that. Uh, but, you know, it is cool that we get to use limit break characters now. But in terms of the team comp that we're bringing today to take on the uh, Colosseum versus Eneru. So we have this team here. We have the six plus of Zoro as well as um, Treasure Map Mihawk, who was such an amazing addition for V2 Fujitora. It really feels like Mihawk was built for Fujitora in mind. Um, and remember, Mihawk was the very first Treasure Map character to come out. And, you know, uh, Fujitora didn't really take that long to come out straight after Fujitora, uh, straight after Lucy, should I say. 
So it makes sense that, you know, Mihawk was built for this character. And we actually have two of the new batch characters as well, because they're going to help out immensely in this final fight. So we've got Viola, and we also have Kiros. So I'm really excited to see how this team is able to get through the content today. So let's go ahead and jump into it versus Colosseum Eneru. So shout out to my man, the Lord Shira, for putting up his Fujitori here. Very, very nice to see. So uh, actually, I should check. It is double. Yeah, it is max skill. It is max skill. Beautiful. So we'll be able to jump into this today with both Fujitoris ready to go. Let's go ahead and jump in and take on final round versus Eneru. Let's get it. Let's go. And it's funny, you know, I always think about, you know, imagine if Bandai can see which teams are being used for content and then they just see like this random person using like characters from like 2015 for this content. Like it's just crazy. Either way, uh, here we go. We want to get our specials ready to go. And remember with Fujitora's captain ability, base 3.25 times attack. But if you hit good, great, perfect in that order, you get a 4.225 times boost to your slasher characters so you know normally it is actually better to not hit good great perfect when you're up against these regular mobs it's just more efficient to hit with perfects and just get the 3.25 times boost instead so that's what we're going to be doing and then essentially we'll hit our good great and perfect when we're single targeting down an enemy and we want to do as much damage to them as possible at that point it makes a lot more sense to hit good great perfect um, and, uh, so I think that stage three, stage three is going to take us a little bit because, uh, we're going to be taking our time with stage three, but then stage four and five should be dealt with really quickly. So by taking time earlier on in the content, it's going to help us to just blast the final two stages and make it a little bit easier for ourselves. So, um, we need to do a little bit of stall, but probably not too much stall, to be honest. I think, I mean, remember every time we take a hit, um... Well, remember Fujitora, he increases damage taken by 1.2, and I believe with double Fujitora, it becomes a 1.44 times increased damage taken. So that obviously is not a good thing. So we are going to move on now. Move on to battle two. Uh, our specials are essentially ready to go, so we're just going to go ahead and move on here. We, uh, we don't really need to store much more. Uh, I can't remember if they orb shuffle us on the first turn of the final stage. Uh, we'll, just, we'll just move on. We'll just move on. We'll just move on so we don't have to worry about it. All right. We got a lot of matching slots anyway. So here we go with... Um, oh, what's this guy's name? Is it Pierre and Garnfor, I believe it is. So we get despaired. But that's fine. We get slot binded, which obviously isn't the best, but it's fine. And then they also have delay immunity. So this is annoying as well because, you know, when you're hitting good, great, perfect with Fujitora, your chain multiplier is never going to reach that max capacity because you you can't hit all perfects. So you're going to have to hit a good and a great. Which means that, you know, these chain debuffs actually hurt you even more than what they normally would. But um, that's why we have, like, chain locking specials with the Mihawk, for example. Mihawk is literally built for Fujitora. So, what we want to do here is we want to do as much damage to these guys as possible. But we're trying to... We're going to aim to kill them with a Fujitora special. Because we want to move into the final... Into, into stage 4, should I say. With a full board of slots. So, we'll see how that kind of goes, right? Um, so, again, good, great, perfect. Against these guys good great perfect there we go oh wow he actually killed him on turn one that's crazy that is actually crazy all right well let's see how we go this time against this guy good great perfect of course no matching slot on zor so we're definitely not killing okay so 720,000. he slot changes us into not the best of slots i'll admit um okay let's do it again good great perfect all right i think we can kill with the two fuji tours here all right let's go ahead and use the fuji tour special so as we said it does like a 10 hits of 20 times his attack, so it, it's technically 200 times his attack, which is actually a lot back in uh, 2017, 2018 when he came out. Um, you know, Fujitora is such a cool character. I really hope we get like a really top tier like V3 Fujitora in the future, because I think we kind of deserve it. I think that'd be pretty cool. All right, so now we activate the secondary Fujitora that should knock him out, which means we'll move on to stage four, and we will already have a full board of matching slots on that stage, which is wicked. That's going to help us out a lot. Rain at war's end. All right, here we go. Bing, 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 bing. Full board of matching slots. Moving on to battle four versus Wiper. 
So Wiper is a pretty nasty pasty. He does have resilience, but we have a really, really cool way to get around that. So we're going to go ahead and use the Zora special here. We are not saving him for the final stage. He does really good AoE damage, and he, uh, he gives us an attack boost, which is going to be really, really good. And he also gives us a chain lock as well. That Zora, super, super neat. So now we're going to hit good, great, perfect with this. Get him down to 1 HP, and then you guys will see how we're dealing with that. You guys will probably know how, how we're dealing with that. So... Here we go, let's do it again. Well, that was more than enough damage. That is perfect. Okay, so wipe it down to 1 HP. He's going to give us block slots this time, and that normally is a bad thing, but we can actually abuse that. So now let's go ahead and use the Kiros special, which is a damage dealing special, which will kill him. And then it also gives us a 1.75 times attack boost to our slashes for three turns, which means that we can carry the attack boost into the final boss stage, as well as getting around the battle for resilience. So it, it works out perfectly for this fight. And then on the boss stage, of course, Eneru, he is also a nasty pasty. So... This guy, he does paralyze us for two turns, I believe it is, three turns, uh, but we do have the cremate ability of the Viola, which does reduce it by one, but her special will reduce the other two turns of it, which is great. Um, Eneru was kind of an, inter an interesting fight, because I believe if you applied any debuff to him himself, uh, you get given some nasty stuff. I can't remember exactly what happened, but uh, we're going to go ahead and use the Viola special, which is going to change the block slots into matching, but it also gets rid of the paralysis, so we get a full board of slots on the Eneru stage, and then we can use the special ability of the brand new treasure map Mihawk at the time, which will allow us to get an orb boost and, uh, and a chain lock, so this is fantastic. We have attack boost, orb boost, and a chain locking effect, so all we have to, have to do is hit our good great perfect and hopefully get the job done. All right, here we go. Yeah, there we go. Easy as you like. There we go. Colosseum Eneru absolutely destroyed with V2 Fujitora as a captain. That was an impressive victory. Got through pretty, pretty quickly, actually. That was not an issue at all. So that's going to bring about the end of yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. And uh, in next week's episode of The Legends of OPTC, we're going to go ahead and discover V2 Rayleigh, which was a, a pretty impressive character on release. Definitely one of my favorite legends to use. And I was actually lucky enough to pull that character on his debut. So definitely going to go ahead and check that one out next week. It's going to be a bunch of fun. But anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video today. And if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure you go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below but on that guys I'll see you guys within the next video